In 1907, Lewis abandoned psychic research, which he judged to be unproductive. What followed was a period of reflection. While engaged in his daily meditations, he became aware that he was finding the answers to questions touching upon the mysteries of life. Puzzled by this, he confided in May Banks Stacy, an elderly woman he had met at the New York Institute for Psychical Research. This amazing individual, the widow of Colonel May Humphrey Stacy, was a member of the Theosophical Society and of the Theosophist Inner Circle, the esoteric group formed within the society. She took a keen interest in the Orient and studied the teachings of Swami Vivekananda. She was also a member of the Manhattan Mystic Circle. May Banks Stacy was attracted to all forms of occultism, especially astrology and chiromancy. H. Spencer Lewis related that it was while she was in the Orient that she encountered Rosicrucians. It was from Maybank Stacy that Lewis first heard about the Rosicrucians. Extremely interested, he then began to conduct research on this mysterious group. At this time, he was only 24 years old and was employed as an illustrator at a New York newspaper. He also enjoyed some degree of success as a photojournalist. Along with these activities, he remained occupied with the Institute for Psychical Research and began to write some articles concerning psychic science and esotericism. In February 1908, he contributed to The Future, a monthly publication belonging to the New Thought Movement. Under the pseudonym of Professor Lewis, he wrote several articles on astrology and, using the name of Royal Thurston, he also published the first article of a series entitled The New Ontology. He described this work as being a series of lessons on a new science explaining life and death, as well as all spiritual phenomena. He touched upon such topics as vital life force, diet, health, magnetism, hypnosis, and psychic energies. But his collaboration with this publication was of short duration because two months later he would have an experience that changed his life completely. In the spring of 1908, on the Thursday after Easter, while seated in a pew to meditate, he had a mystical experience that would affect the rest of his life. During this experience, he came to understand that the knowledge he sought could not be found in books, but rather, deep within himself. He was also convinced that he had to go to France so as to come in contact with Rosicrucians. This mystical experience left a profound impression upon H. Spencer Lewis and became the starting point for his pilgrim's journey to the East. In the hope of obtaining some information regarding Rosicrucianism in France, he decided to write to a Parisian bookseller whose catalogue he had obtained. We have not succeeded in identifying this individual. However, this person contacted H. Spencer Lewis with the following reply. If you came to Paris and found it convenient to call at the studio of Monsieur Blanc, the professor of languages at number blank, Boulevard Saint-Germain, he might be able to tell you something of the circle of which you inquire. It might be advisable to hand him this note. Certainly a letter to him announcing your coming, by date and name of boat, would be courteous. Although his financial situation did not permit him to consider such a voyage, an unexpected opportunity presented itself the following week. His father, Aaron Lewis, an expert in authenticating documents as well as a renowned genealogist, needed an assistant while conducting research in France for the Rockefeller family. On July 24, 1909, the two men sailed for Europe on the America, 
of the Hamburg America Line. On Sunday, August 1st, the ship arrived at Cherbourg, and the two travelers set off for Paris by train. The days that followed were entirely devoted to genealogical research, and it was only in the following week that H. Spencer Lewis was able to visit the bookshop and the professor of languages on Boulevard Saint Germain. The Pilgrim's journey to the East reported his meetings with the professor on Saturday, August 7th, and on Monday, August 9th. This man was about 45 years old, spoke perfect English, and asked many probing questions to determine Lewis's intentions. At the end of the second meeting, he recommended that his American visitor travel to southern France, where he would receive further instructions. Once again, good fortune, or maybe more appropriately, divine providence, smiled upon our traveler, because his father had just planned to travel to southern France where he could continue his genealogical research for the Rockefeller family. On Tuesday, August 10th, the two men left Paris, and following some adventures that H. Spencer Lewis interpreted as his having been put to the test, they arrived in Toulouse on Wednesday. On the following day, his father resumed his work and probably went to the dungeon, keep or old tower, to consult the city archives. Meanwhile, H. Spencer Lewis went to the Gallery of the Illustrious of the Capitol, where he met an individual who was instrumental in bringing his quest to a successful conclusion. After a brief discussion, this person gave him a piece of paper on which was written the name of the street where he should go so as to meet some Rosicrucians. H. Spencer Lewis does not disclose the name of this individual, but merely indicates that his profession was photography. Later, Ralph M. Lewis, his son, indicated that this person was an eminent photographer. In all likelihood, he was Clovis LaSalle, a photographer who specialized in the fine arts, archaeology, commerce, and industry. This hypothesis is confirmed by the fact that H. Spencer Lewis's personal archives contain a letter that LaSalle wrote to him on August 26, 1909. Traveling by taxi to the address indicated by the photographer, since the trolley line did not go that far. Lewis rode out of the center of town, crossed the Garonne River, and went several kilometers before finding himself opposite a building that had an ancient tower similar to the one on the engraving that the Parisian professor had shown him a few days previously. After climbing the steps of a circular staircase, Lewis arrived at the top story, where he was greeted by an old man with a long gray beard and slightly wavy, long, white hair. The room he entered was a square chamber, its walls lined with books. The gentleman who received him was the archivist of a mysterious Rosicrucian order, a group of initiates from Languedoc, whose few members worked in the strictest secrecy. Lewis stated that his host was also a member of the same small group of Freemasons to which the Parisian bookseller belonged. After showing him the archives, the old man stated that he had been judged worthy of further knowledge and that he was to meet the Grand Master of the Order on the very same day. <laughs>